Merci, Bon Wing. Mr. Speaker, the purpose of our tax incentives for single family offices is to provide them certainty that the funds they set up will not be taxed on income derived from investments managed in Singapore. Without such certainty, funds of a single family office may be taxed in Singapore in addition to the tax that the family as an investor may be subject to. This would make it unattractive for single family offices to set up and invest funds in Singapore. Now, to qualify for the tax incentives, applicants must be able to demonstrate their contribution to Singapore's economy. They must meet minimum requirements on business spending, assets under management, and creating investment professional jobs here. Now, MAS regularly reviews its tax incentive schemes. In April 2022, MAS raised the minimum criteria for single-family office, offices by one, increasing hiring requirements, and two, introducing a new requirement for family offices to invest at least 10% or Singapore $10 million of the assets, whichever is lower, in local investments. Now, single-family offices often start with small teams of investment professionals. Hence, the more meaningful way to create local jobs is through their positive spillover effects in creating demand for ancillary services like legal, custody and tax services and fund administration. As elaborated in this House previously, government agencies are developing initiatives to tap the growing interest from family offices to provide capital to support enterprise financing, ESG investments and philanthropic activities. MAS will continue to review the fund tax incentive schemes to ensure that they are relevant and that single family officers can contribute meaningfully to Singapore as they set up their presence here. Mr. Yvonne Wing. I thank the MOS for his reply. I have two SQs. First, does MAS have the regulatory powers to oversee family offices? prevent tax evasion and fraud. Second, will the Ministry consider having the employment of Singaporeans as a hiring requirement for family offices for local job creation? Thank you. Thanks, uh, Member, for his SQ. Well, Family offices do open accounts with banks in Singapore, and MAS requires all banks operating in Singapore to put in place robust controls to detect and defer the flow of illicit funds. Now, these controls include rigorous processes to identify customers, understand the intended purpose of account opening, evaluate the risks posed, and monitor the accounts on an ongoing basis for suspicious activity. And since 2018, Singapore has activated over 70 relationships with countries to share tax-related information. Now, through these relationships, tax authorities will be able to get information through financial institutions of account holders who are their tax residents. Now, this reaffirms Singapore's commitment to international standards on transparency and cross-border tax cooperation to deter tax evasion. On his first question, I would like to, to um, spawn that single family offices are set up to manage the family's own monies. And thus, it is reasonable for the families to have the discretion to make their own decisions on who to hire to manage their family's investments. Further, family offices often invest in globally diversified assets, which may require knowledge of overseas markets. And fundamentally, not imposing a requirement to hire locals is to allow family offices the same ability to make hiring decisions that is based on merit, similar to other employers. Nonetheless, it is our objective that remains to create good jobs here and to give our locals the best chance to take up those jobs by investing heavily in their capabilities and skills. To equip locals with skills relevant for family offices, MAS has partnered with industry experts and the Institute of Banking and Finance to launch three skills maps for the family office sector in 2020 and 2021. 
These skills map set out capabilities that family office, employees, management and external service providers should possess, including in new technical skills and competencies for family governance and philanthropy advisory. And these skill maps are used by training providers such as our Wealth Management Institute and SMU Business Families Institute to develop relevant training programs. With co-funding of training fees provided for Singapore citizens and permanent residents. The Wealth Management Institute, for instance, aims to train more than 5,000 professionals via its family office programs by 2025. 